Welcome to Brand Identity Design. My name is Jason, your host, and I'm currently doing a series called as The Dark Side of Entrepreneurship. Uh, the series aims to actually uh, speak about entrepreneurial uh, challenges, and we want to bring that to light. And we want the world to know that these challenges is what defines us, which gr helps us grow. And, and, and currently, Hey, thank you so much, Michael, for joining the room. Uh, thank you, Sakshi, for joining the room as well. So I'll, I'll quickly uh, do a reset again. Welcome to Brand Identity Design. Uh, my name is Jason, your host. And uh, we are currently doing uh, a series called as The Dark Side of Entrepreneurship. Uh, you know, while we wait for our guests to join in our conversation, I want to let I want to thank all the individuals who are listening to this conversation live or on replay or Spotify. I'll try to host, uh, you know, rooms daily, except for Thursdays and Fridays at 12 Eastern Standard Time. Thank you, Tiffany, for, you know, joining hey. the conversation. Yeah, so great to have you. And uh, I was just letting, letting uh, you know, our audience know that if they, if they want to be a guest on the show, you know, the followers doesn't really matter. Uh, as long as you can articulate your thoughts, explain what you do, okay, we are more than happy to have you as a guest on the show. If you want to advertise, pretty simple, DM me the word advertise. Uh, we will be happy to give you a shout out uh, during the show. DM me the word guest if you like to become a guest. I like to formally uh, welcome my guest, my very good friend, uh, Tiffany. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to interview you. Uh, I appreciate you being here. Tiffany, uh, you know, is 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 a licensed uh, psychotherapist and also an entrepreneur and a founder of Safety Harbor Behavioral uh, Health and Counseling Center. Uh, she also has 20 years of experience in psychotherapist. She's also the radio host of the show Moments of Clarity with Tiffany. And this is one reason you don't see me on Thursdays and Friday because the show airs Thursdays and Friday, you know, at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. Uh, the show's mission, uh, if you guys, you know, I may have said this numerous times, but the mission of Moments of Clarity is to end the stigma on mental health. And uh, she also has a master's degree uh, from Palm Beach Atlantic, uh, the University in Counseling Psychology. Uh, she's also a published author and that has been nominated two times for Author Elite Award. And uh, she has been nominated last year. Uh, her, I mean, not, I mean her, but, you know, her show, Moments of Clarity with Tiffany, has been nominated 19 for 19 awards last year alone. And it has also been placed uh, in the top 10 of, of three separate categories of People Choice uh, Podcast Awards. So it's a great honor, Tiffany, not only to be your friend, but also to be in a position to interview you and, and get to know you more. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, today, we are going to be speaking about mental health and why it's okay not to be okay. And I know, Tiffany, you are very passionate about ending the stigma on mental health. We want our audience to know what helped you to start uh, off and uh, what started this passion of yours. If you can give us a little in, in, insights and give us a little background, Tiffany, we can start from that. Uh, thank you. Hey, Jason, thanks for having me. And hi, friends down there. Thank you for being here. Hi, everyone. Um, so my name is Tiffany Warner. And um, I'm a host of Moments of Clarity with Tiffany, um, along with a few other things. But um, my passion is to end the stigma on mental health. And it 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 came from just a long journey of, I don't know, I think of serendipity, kind of just how things happen to us. And, and I guess we have to look for signs on how things come in our way, people come in our way, or things get lost, or however it is, that bring us to our calling in life, whether it's good or bad, or whatever it is. Um, I'm a strong believer of just looking for signs and taking bad opportunities and making them into something that maybe was meant to be. Um, my story uh, was just a 
pattern of things. So I'm a licensed therapist. I host a live radio show, like you were saying. Thanks for the nice welcoming. And it's an honor to be here, an honor to be your friend too, Jason, and to a lot of people that are down in the audience as well. Thank you guys for showing up, um, for supporting, and to to listen. And I just appreciate that. And to anyone that's listening on replay, just hearing my story, that's nice um as well um honored to share it I, you know like a lot of bad things happen to good people and it's what we do with them that defines our character so i'm gonna start with a cute story but it then turns bad and good i guess but um so my father and my uncle are marines in vietnam and i say are because they say once a marine always a marine um, they both have passed away from Agent Orange. Um, anyways, but uh, which is kind of like the spray that they sprayed over the soldiers to kill the weed so they could see the enemies or snipers or whatever. I don't know. I, I hate to say the word enemies, but that's just how war is, right? Um, they fought side by side in Purple Hearts, uh, both as captains and... Uh, platoon leaders and frontline. Um, my father had three Purple Hearts, um, first lieutenant and, uh, and retired as captain and um, a war hero, basically. Same with my uncle, they were best friends. When they went on deployment, my mother went to go visit her brother, AKA my uncle. And back then it was an airline stewardess not a flight attendant, but back then, you know, stewardess, like everyone, uh, she was beautiful. I just put it that way. And went to go see her brother in Spain and word has it that they were just so gaga over each other during even a bullfight that they missed a major door killing the bull, which in my opinion, I wouldn't want to see that anyway, but that's how in love they just immediately were. And I love that story because basically uh, my mom, married her brother's best friend or my dad married his best friend's sister or whatever you want to say but um i was exposed to the stigma on mental health back then because back then mental health was not very very prominent um or even understood a lot of it i think in my personal opinion had a lot to do with the media like one flew over their cuckoo's nest people thought that if you're mentally ill or whatever that that you would be in an asylum or crazy or you need a little bottomy or everyone was so afraid of being mentally ill like the, they would be called crazy or something so um then you know yada 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 you know they fall in love get married and uh i have an older brother and i exist now too so maybe like so i'm just gonna fast forward to that and um I had a really good childhood. Um, I didn't know how good I had it at the time until I'm looking back at it, like from now or later on in life, but um, very, very blessed. Anyway, so blessed that when it was time for college, I wanted to, to stay home for summer school at a nearby junior college just because I wasn't ready to leave home yet. So it's kind of like that. And I woke up to like early for once. In fact, I just remember I was, I'm, I'm habitually late. Like anybody that knows me, I just do. Um, they're like, are we going to be on time or on Tiffany time? So kind of like that, uh, just by accident. I don't know. I don't do it on purpose. Anyway, so woke up for school early and thought, I'm going to get to school on time today. And I walked into the bathroom and found my mother on the floor and she had had a brain aneurysm, brain aneurysm and never woke up. And I was barely 18. I just turned 18. And it traumatized me. And we saw the ambulance, everything. She died about five to seven days later. Um, and that was my first trauma, like unexpected trauma that just hits you. Like, sudden death is like a hole in your heart you just don't get it like it's it just puts you on a different realm where you're just out of control um i turned into an at-risk youth i didn't get it and i went away to a university and during that my 
grandmother died. Her mom couldn't accept the fact that she lost her daughter. I think she died of depression and a broken heart, to be honest. And then my dad's mom, who lived with me my whole life, passed away from cancer. And then my father shortly after. But before my father died, I, I was falling apart. I, I was a straight-A student, varsity cheerleader. Um, got into a University of Florida, which is really hard school to get into. And then I said, I don't think I'm okay. Um, I was losing weight, um, falling apart, and just not myself. And his words were, you're not crazy. You don't need help, and you can get through this. And I remember him saying that. And I was thinking, oh, well, why, why is it so hard for me if I can't get through this? And that was my first introduction to the stigma of mental health, which is just my passion across the board. That that was just step one. And um, so that's kind of like the beginning of my story, Jason. Um, mm-hmm. I, I appreciate you, you actually letting the audience know what inspired you and what you know, kind of pushed you to do this and, and, and dealing with sudden loss and losing your loved ones, loved ones, actually, it, it is very challenging. It is very traumatizing. And when you had so many people pass away at a, at a, at a very young age and you standing up for yourself, completing your education and reaching where you are today, I, I really applaud your courage. Uh, I mean, as as an individual, that's why I have a lot of respect, uh, and you know, for you and what you do, because you know, standing that way, and and you've been doing it for so many years now, Tiffany. You know, I, I remember uh, you have done, you know, about six hundred episodes so far on your YouTube channel. I mean, that is just counting what we see online. Uh, We are not even counting the ones which you did prior. So you are in this mission for a very, very long time. I I, I want to thank you for doing what you're doing. Mental health, I think, is very important. Entrepreneurs ourselves, you know, we go through a lot of challenges. And, uh, you know, I I don't think people voice out. So it's, it's perfectly fine, you know, not to be okay. It's perfectly fine to ask, uh, you know, people to help you out or, you know, approach you know, who is a therapist and, and seek help. So I appreciate you for doing what you do. I, I wanted to actually just, you know, kind of go around the part, you know. So last year alone, Tiffany, you know, you were nominated for 19 awards. Okay. Plus you were placed in the top 10, uh, you know, of three separate categories of People Choice Podcast Awards. So, would you uh, would you mind you know taking us back and 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 just helping us understand how is this possible how are you able to do this and 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 give our audience a little idea like how do you make this happen uh you're on mute tiffany yeah i'm sorry about that i um is that your alarm clock um it's a different phone that i need to return and for some reason the alarm's on um anyway so um thank you for acknowledging that jason and yeah it's come a long way so um anyway so this kind of goes with the story behind that so so i'm in college, my father had just passed, and I'm in grad school. I put myself through school. My my father just suffered with brain cancer from Agent Orange, from breathing in that. Uh, same with my uncle; he had lung cancer. Like I said, they were Marines, and they um, breathed in this toxin that later on proved to cause cancer for a lot of veterans. Um, and so I kind of lost two parents at the same time. Was, he just lost, he he lost it too. Like when, you know, sudden death, he just lost his wife. I lost my mom. But it's kind of one of those things where you like, you got to kind of be there for your kids too. But I don't think anybody knew how to do that either. We're talking about over 20 years ago too. So, um it's been a while and I've had a journey to go through, but so 
um, they, um, so I was pretty much on my own and, and I was in grad school. My father had passed away and it was 2001, um, when he passed away and, and I was in school and I was becoming a counselor and I think I'm not answering your question, but I'm trying to get to it. But, and I was in this, this class called as group therapy, basically half the class we learned to run a group and half of it, we were the group just did whatever. And he's like, how does it feel to be an orphan? And I was like, huh? He's like, you look, he actually, word for word, he said, Tiffany, you look pathetic. I had just gotten back to school after my father's funeral. And he goes, it must be really hard being an orphan. And I just never looked at it like that. Like an orphan, I, I don't know. And I looked it up in the dictionary. Textbook means it's a person that doesn't have their parents, but I always kind of thought an orphan is somebody that never knew them. So I'm grateful for knowing them as long as I did. Um, they gave me all the tools. I don't know. I am who I am because I knew them at least 18, 19 years, you know? But anyway, um, the class kind of went off on the professor, by the way, because he was really good. <laughs> but... Um, I've never felt like that. I've never victimized or whatever. I just try to figure it out. Keep going, keep going, keep going. But there's another stigma right there. And um, so I was always like passionate about psychology and everything, but I kind of felt like looking back that maybe I was just trying to figure out myself because I was told to, that to, if you go to counseling or whatever, you're weak. If you go to seek help, then you're weak. That's what I was told. That's what I was ever. And um, so, but then I started to realize it's okay to not be okay. Like the topic of the show, which my friend down in the room, Kirk, says that all the time, Kirk Patrick Miller. But it's true. It's okay to not be okay. Because it, no one's okay all the time. Like, um, we, we can look for support with our friends, um, family, we can make our own family. They don't have to be blood related, things like that. I, I don't know. I just never felt alone. Um, I guess, um, there's stages of grief. I was in the anger stage, you know, it's denial, bargaining, anger, depression, acceptance. And you can go up and down those five stages of grief all the time. I mean, acceptance stage all the time, but then something happens and get mad again or depressed or whatever. Anyway, so, um, so the, the, I worked with at risk youth cause that was my thing. I just was like, well, I almost became one. I saw how trauma could derail somebody because it definitely derailed me for a minute, a good minute. Um, and so I worked with the correctional facilities, with at-risk youth, maximum risk youth, all these things, and then started private practice um, and with a doctor's clinic, um, psychiatrist, medication providers. And I was one of three licensed therapists among a bunch of medication nurse practitioners and psychiatrists. And so in the lobby was a lot of people with medication seeking or that kind of thing, not seeking, but you know what I mean? They're for their meds to see the psychiatrist and a lot of my clients were there just to consider counseling and they would all come in and be like, you know, I don't know why I'm here. I'm not crazy. I, whatever, I, I think it was intimidating for them. So they would, um, want to sneak out the back door or like, I already have my appointment for next week. And is it okay if I just go out your side door? I'm like, okay. There's another hint, stigma. They were like, well, why is it like that? Like, why are you ashamed to come talk about marital issues or uh, breaking up with a boyfriend for some kids or like, you know, things like that? Because there should be no shame in that. There should be no shame in seeking mental health or help for it because we all go through something. I don't know what the term normal is. Um, if someone called me average or normal, I'd be offended, to be honest. Um, anyway, so... Uh, I opened up my own counseling center and, and I wanted it to be non-clinical 
without doctors, that kind of stuff called Safety Harbor, be your fault counseling center, like you said in the beginning. Or you get the bottle of water, or you get the like, kind of a comforting environment, aromatherapy. Just it feels cozy, you know, and not so clinical, like where people no medication providers, no receptionists, that kind of thing. And while I was doing the grand opening, because I joined the Chamber of Commerce, which is just something you do, like if, to be uh, accredited, accredited, credible, or and um, during the grand opening, I gave a speech. There's about over 100 people there or something like, to welcome the new business, or whatever. They give a ribbon cutting. And that's when Tantalk Radio was there. And they said, they asked me if I would like to host a show, a radio show, um, a psychology show. I said, sure. Nobody told me what to do. So I said, but give a girl a microphone. I'd be like, um, yeah, all right. I had no idea what to do, and uh, they wanted to be more like if you ever seen the show Frasier or whatever, or like those psychology shows where people call in and ask the doctor questions or whatever. But nobody called in because it was on Wednesday nights at eight when, at the time, American Idol was like booming, and it was exactly at the time when it was on TV. And plus, nobody knew about the show because I wasn't, I didn't know how to market like you do, Jason, and that kind of stuff. So. Nobody was calling in. So then I started begging my friends and my clients, like, will you please call in? Because I look stupid. <laughs> and ergo, I started having guests. But back then, even just seven years ago, um, not just, but seven years ago, um, we were like, I don't want to be on there. I don't want to tell my story. Oh, my gosh. I don't want to look like an ass, basically. I was afraid to talk about their story on mental health. It's come a long way because now people are like, let me tell my story. Thank God. It's starting to come a long way, but that's the stigma, the stigma, stigma, stigma on mental health. So if you don't understand what the stigma on mental health means, it just means that that there's, there's a taboo on feeling like you're mentally ill, but everyone has something. Everyone has something. We all do. Whether it's adjustment disorder or like in my case, post-traumatic stress from losing my parents or I have a lot more than that. I probably have a, I don't know, textbook full of stuff. <laughs> uh, I don't care. Especially when you're studying it, you're like, oh my gosh, I have that too. And you think you start self-diagnosing things. Sorry about that. Um, anyway, so, um, and I'm kind of being kidding. I'm kind of kidding on that one, but I don't know. But anyway, but it's okay to not be okay. It's okay to talk to someone. I'm, I've had therapists my my life too. Like I still have one that I call if I'm in a rut. Um, and I'm not ashamed to say that. I think everyone should have someone objective to talk to and, and, and be able to get things off their chest because we all need someone to talk to and someone that even if it's not a friend or a family member, especially that then, cause you don't want to worry them. If you're going through something, like, I like talking to someone that's not going to sit there and call and say, well, how are you doing today? Or whatever. I just want to just vent and just be like to someone that can just say, yeah, I understand. And give me some coping skills or maybe put it in a different perspective. And I walk away and they're not worried about me. You know, like it's their job. Like, I mean, maybe they care or whatever, but at the same time, it's not, it's not like mm-hmm. a person that is a family. Anyway. So it started the radio show and I've been passionate about that for a long time. And yeah, it's come a long way. Um, it's on live radio, like AF, AM and FM stations, um, YouTube live, LinkedIn live. Um, that's just the radio show. Um, and, um, Twitter live and about eight Facebook channels as well as then saved on all podcast platforms. And all those nominations, yeah, it was a big surprise. Um, I think I like, I was just beside myself with all these uh, award nominations and things like that. But that has come a long way just because uh, when they put me on with a microphone, uh, it's embarrassing. I, I listened to the first episode and I'm like, oh my God, I sound so young. And I'm like, I'm actually on air. And someone called in. I'm like, we actually have a caller? What? 
Like, I, <laughs> I'm not kidding. Oh my God, like, really? We have a caller, like, seven years ago. So, um, yeah, it's come a long way. It has. <laughs> I don't sound like that anymore. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's been a long struggle and it's been amazing. If that's answered your question. I, yeah, yeah, it, uh, it does answer my question, but I appreciate you giving us the backstory. I also appreciate the fact that, you know, you did debunk, or uh, I would not call it, maybe debunk. I don't know, but everybody has something, and, and it's 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 considered a taboo. But everybody has something, so I appreciate you sharing that. I appreciate you giving us that backstory about so many things you had to go through to reach where you are. And I think you you absolutely deserve, you know, the, the awards which you're winning. In fact, you know, I I, I wanted more people to actually promote you and give you more awards because i don't think it was easy you have shared uh, your journey numerous times with me over phone calls tiffany so i respect you a lot it takes a lot of courage to do what you do i i i you know we would be resetting the room soon uh, you know before resetting the room i i wanted the audience to know that i have pinned the link uh, to uh, to tiffany's youtube channel i would highly encourage people to click on it and subscribe uh, to this youtube channel uh, you know and 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 uh, around uh, i think last month we also did uh, the 600th episode as well so i would be pinning that link too which uh, shows 600 episodes uh, with regards to ending the stigma on mental health and it was a great show and uh, and 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 yeah it was pretty funny it was great <laughs> um but since it's, uh, yeah, it was, it was great. Just the same with the Thanksgiving episode and like a lot of friends below. Um, I'm done sharing like just whatever. It's up to you, Jay. But um, if you want to bring people up, since I have a client at one, if people want to speak or whatever, then that's the yes, time. Yes. If it's up to you. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. I just wanted to uh, quickly, uh, you know, uh, do a room reset. You know, Tiffany, you are allowed to, you know, invite people up while I do the room reset. So welcome to Brand Identity Design. Uh, my name is Jason, your host. And we are currently doing this series called as the Dark Side of Entrepreneurship. Okay, I appreciate all the listeners who are present here on, on stage and also the ones who would be hearing us on replay or on Spotify. So thank you, uh, Girish, Queen, Leslie, good friend. Rita, Melissa, Kirk, also a good friend, Pawan, Darshil, Chi, Kiana, Michael, Anjali, Dr. Denise, Ashish, Ionala, uh, uh, G, Jean, uh, sorry if I butchered any, anyone's name, Michelle, Abby, uh, Jubna, and BB. Due to, due to, uh, due to uh, Tiffany's schedule, we would be keeping the Q&A short, uh, and we are trying to uh, get the show down from 90 minutes to 60 minutes. So we will be available for another 30 more minutes so that we are respectful for our audience and, and the guests too. So I am, I'm going to stop, uh, you know, getting people up for Q&A. So thank you so much, uh, you know, Girish and everybody who has joined our conversation. So Girish, do you, do you have a question or would you like to contribute to this conversation? Uh, it's a Careful. question if you don't. Uh, okay, fine. I'll I'll shut up. Then. Go ahead, Queen. <laughs> Wait, no. I it was Tiffany. Careful, you're on my show next week. So whatever you're gonna say, Garish, <laughs> just okay. go ahead with your question. No, fine. I'll just shut up. Queen, that is ahead. so funny, but that's smart, Garish. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No. So okay. So you know when Tiffany, if I go to your website and I I see all these nominations, right? And regardless, you win, don't win. That's a separate topic altogether, right? But do you think this is a, se a sense of success or do you still have a long way to go, even though that you've doing this for the longest time? What are your thoughts on that? Uh, I, I'm, I've got a long way to go. There's been so many setbacks the past seven years where I thought I was going to give up or I thought I should. And, and I feel like God put something in my way that made me feel like I shouldn't stop. So it's like, Right when I felt like, because airtime is expensive on radio. It's not a podcast that's free. And um, something would just come in my path where I was just like, I don't know if I can afford this or whatever. And a sponsor would come along or something. Or um, 
or a toxic person, which made me like more motivated to keep going, you know, because bad people come in your path that kind of lights a fire in your ass to kind of like be like, wait, I'm not giving up now, especially because of that person too. So like, you got to like read those signs. It's not everything's going to be easy. And when, for me, when it's a challenge, it makes me like more want to just, you know, make it happen and the nominations are just like mind-blowing like nice but always a bride's me never a bride even though i'm married but at the same time uh kind of like just a saying saying like i'm gonna keep trying and i mean i got some three trophies for being top 10 but i want the winner one you know i don't know i just want something to dust on my bookshelf That'd but Stephanie, uh, this is, uh, don't undermine yourself. Uh, this is just me personally, but this is top 10 out of whatever, a hundred or a thousand or a million or whatever. That's still out there. So you, yeah. you still well from the top 10. So that's how I look at it. Maybe, I don't know, maybe you're wrong, but it was <laughs> that that's just from my eyes. It was 250,000. So there you go, 250,000 for a 10. So can we all flash our mics for her, please, if you don't mind? Okay, that, that's like yeah, a big absolutely. achievement. Yeah, absolutely. There's four that we find out around Valentine's Day that's up against, I don't know, uh, a lot more. I'm up against like Conan O'Brien and Rob Lowe and, and Oprah, crap like that. But <laughs> those are likely to not happen, but at the same time, <laughs> still four of them. And then, thanks for the flashing of the mics, guys. That's nice. For those that have a mic. But, um, and then, um, but... It's not really even about that. Like, like, I don't really care about the awards. It's more about just like all the hard work and sweat and everything, and like to like be recognized. Like that, I guess, is really cool. But to win or not win, I mean, it just—it's more like to. I don't know. I mean, because we could all buy a trophy. Like kids, like in little league right now, and get trophies just for playing, and they don't even have to win. It's pretty funny, but um, it's more about. I mean, because I wasn't always supported. I've had a lot of setbacks. I've had a lot of people trying to break me down around those seven years, trying to tell me that it wasn't worth it, or a lot of haters, or a lot of all that stuff. You know, like when people, people are people. You know, there's a lot that will negatively say stuff, and uh, it just pushed me further because I hate when tell me somebody tells me I can't do. Something. Can't is like the worst four letter word. I'd rather drop the F bomb than say I can't. So. Um, tell me something I can't do, <laughs> then watch me. I don't know. If that's my mentality, but or at least watch me try. At least I don't know. But thanks for asking. Yeah, Girish. Thanks, thanks for asking that. I appreciate that, Girish. Uh, he's a he's a good friend of both of ours. Okay, a very good guy, podcaster from Back to Basics. I highly encourage people to follow Girish. And Tiffany too. I have pinned uh, one of the videos which we did together about the dark side of entrepreneurship, about me, uh, you know, facing some challenges <laughs> with public speaking. <laughs> I, now I get why you messaged me this morning and said, could you please upload the thumbnail for the picture? Because <laughs> if you put it back on, because we weren't prepared, uh, Jason kindly filled in last minute and was on this show. <laughs> Again. And the. Uh, and he made this beautiful artwork that I'm supposed to go into the YouTube channel and put it on, but because it saved it and both of us have our eyes shut, like we're sleeping <laughs> and I didn't expect that you were going to post it on top. That's what you're like, can you do it? I'm like, yo, I just woke up <laughs> and now I get why. It's pretty funny. Like, yeah. Right there, yeah. Like, so... we're, but we're all sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I blame, not, I blame you too. Moment, so they're awesome. They're awesome. We're gonna, <laughs> you already got over. What was it? We looked at it last night. Two thousand five hundred views. Yes, two thousand five hundred. From just views. last last week on YouTube yeah. alone, which is amazing. And we look like that. And I haven't even updated the YouTube channel. <laughs> People are probably like, I wonder what they're sleeping about. No, just kidding. <laughs> but, so 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 now, now I get it. Yeah, no problem, Tiffany. So I want to be respectful with regards to your time and, and the people here in the audience. So let's actually you know, do the Q&A queen. Thank you so much. She was actually the first person who I interviewed for my series, 
queen yours is the first episode and it's actually rocking on spotify i just want you to know and i have got so many requests asking for your survival poem so I've can you read everybody. that queen for me like yes. just really quick i know that you're gonna be on moments of clarity in a couple of weeks like she was supposed to be on friday but it was a conflict of an appointment but what got me was that in your your poem which I think needs a beatbox behind it. God, <laughs> it, it. It fits exactly what I do. If you don't mind reading it, that'd be awesome. Yes, let me find it because I don't remember it by heart. But before we go into that poem, I want to say like, I'm like a biggest fan. Every time I hear you and get to know more and more of you, Tiffany, you are a superstar. Like, I love your story. And I love that you didn't give up. You know, because otherwise you wouldn't have a platform that can help others, you know, out there have a voice, especially in mental health. So go girl, you rock, <laughs> you're amazing. Um, and before I read the poem, I wanna ask one question. What was that one thing inside your heart and your spirit that kept you pushing? That one thing that every day, even if anybody didn't come on that show that you knew, like, I have to keep doing this. This is my calling. Just for the show? Or in life. life or in life like i said like i hate when people say can't i don't know i i woke up one day and all of a sudden i realized i had no one to count on but myself because my family fell apart and like a lot of the good ones died um and it never crossed my mind of like feeling like victimized i was like oh crap like i need to figure stuff out so i can survive i just been in survival mode my life and just and it's exhausting i gotta tell you that but at the same time I, I i i don't play the victim never have just figure out something else figure out how to survive and i was joking with jason um i could say like you know i've always made things happen and figured it out but uh and no judgment to anyone but you know i've never slept with anyone for money and i've never taken my clothes off for money either <laughs> proud to say that uh but that's me i'm too shy to do that but like too conservative but always figured something out like whether it's um just you know going to school i've always had two jobs i've always like worked at correctional facilities and taught college uh on weekends for four hours like taught psychology and at age like 28 and they're like how old are you are you old enough to be our professor like stuff i don't know um just and i used to be scared of public speaking too that's kind of funny too, but another show. But I just, um, I think the one thing is, is what I hated the most is when people found out when I was younger that my mom passed away and that my dad passed away, that look that they gave me, that look of pity or, oh, I hated those people, I hated that. So I always wanted to prove them wrong. I just hated being looked at like that. And I don't know what that's what it is, but like now it just kind of comes to my attention. I hated being looked at like, with pity or sympathy or not sympathy. It was more like a, oh, and I'm like, don't feel bad. I get it. Like, I'm just telling you what happened kind of deal. Like, and it would make me be afraid to tell my story because I didn't want people to think I was weak or a victim or whatever. And so, I don't know. I think that had a lot to do with why I just wanted to accomplish stuff and say, how you like me now kind of deal. If that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. I love it. All right, here we go. Surviving. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, it ties in to what you said, Tiffany. Because as you're saying, I'm like, now I know why you love this poem. Uh -huh. It's just like we're, you know, like we're sisters. It's aligned. <laughs> okay, surviving. I'm breathing. Does that make me alive? I can see things a bit hazy. I'm packing my bags, yet it's still empty. Surviving, is that still an option for me? I feel my skin, it's cold, but I still have a pulse. I glare at my reflection I no longer recognize. My voice is cracked and a bit dry. I'm drinking water, yet I still feel thirsty. What am I surviving? Well, maybe I'm surviving me. Surviving pain that I don't wanna feel going on the media to heal. I put on my mask to cover my wounds. I adjust my tone, embracing this image, running from my reflection I no longer want to see. Surviving, 
me. It's not a battle I want to have. I get down on my knees, warm tears stream down my face. I ask God, please take this pain from me. Gratitude fuels me. Spirit of protection covers me. Surviving is no longer my burden. Survived is my story. God is my protector because I am now survived. They should flash mics for Queen. You know, that is such a lovely poem. I got something better. Ooh. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I love my bell. I love that, Queen. Uh, yeah, now you now you know why I love it so much. You're right. <laughs> I It's probably stuff I say, but you just said it so much better. This this poem, yeah, I, yeah, I, she, I, this poem she, is your I, story. I, it's my story, and it's your story as well. It's just, it resonates with probably more people than you know. And that's the thing. Um, something that I think, you know, I'm a solution focused therapist. I, I know all types of therapy, like cognitive behavioral therapy and dialectical, and psychotherapy, whatever, but I'm solution focused. So if someone wants to come in the office and just talk about the same thing over and over and over again, do nothing about it, I refer them out. Because of my nerves, first of all, I have ADD, I have attention deficit, hyperactivity disorder. I'll zone out if I hear the same thing over and over and over and over and over again, and they don't want to do anything about it. I am the wrong fit for them. And then most of the time, I'm like, I'm the wrong fit for you because I'm not going to keep someone sick or whatever. I, I want them to progress, and you know, I want their problems to resolve and fill in coping skills and have them reach their full potential in life. And if they're not willing to put the work in, I'm not, the client has to work harder than the therapist. And most of the time that right then, when I say I'm not the right fit because of that, and I tell them pretty much that, that's when they start doing the work because they don't want me to like give up on them. And I'm not trying to give up. It's like, I'm not going to just be able to just sit here and listen because you're paying me to pretty much zone out. Like, I don't know, I'm just being real. And um, then that's when they put the work in, or they go find someone that is willing to just, you know, eat lunch and pretend to listen. And I don't know if you ever seen there's something about Mary or, you know, some shows that comedy about the therapist kind of listening and not really being there. Uh, so that's not me. So I like to see people progress and not need therapy for life. And then they can call me when they need me, or, you know, there's some people that know me. Um, just colleagues of mine some here in the audience that they just know but uh, we gotta do this and let's progress and make your life better but so anyway surviving yes i love that queen i need I, like i said you need a beatbox and a, a beat and a record out there because it's just kind of like uh and i'm not gonna do it like but the Chasing the waterfalls, that left eye. Oh, the yes. rap. Uh, I actually know the rap, and I'm gonna do it privately for you later. But I'm not gonna do it on here. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing it right now. We don't have time for that. But I'm gonna. I'll tell you later, Queen. I love it. Thank Pretty you. <laughs> well, thank you, Queen, for the question, and and also for uh, you know sharing your poem. If anybody is interested in getting that poem by Queen, uh, just send me the word surviving as a DM. I will be happy to share that with you. So I, I wanted to quickly give a shout out to everybody who is actually in the speakers and as well as the listening lounge. Thank you, Leslie, for your patience. Darshil, thank you so much for joining the conversation. Melissa, good friend. Thank you for being here. Rita, also, thank you so much for supporting Tiffany. Dr. Denise, thank you for being here. Kirk is also a good friend. Thank you so much for being here. Kiana, so great to see you. She will be my guest uh, you know, this this uh, Saturday. Thank you, Kiana, Chi, Michael, Anjali, uh, Gian, Mercy, M Marcy, sorry, Kiki, Rose, Ray Ray, so great to see you. Uh, thank you so much, Michelle, for being here. I appreciate it, guys. So we are falling actually short of time, so we'll quickly, you know, continue with the Q&A. So, Leslie, do you have a question or would you like to contribute to this conversation? Well, first of all, I just... You know, just a huge shout out to all of you. Um, Tiffany is is a dear friend of mine. We met through Clubhouse along with several other people here on the stage. And I just am so, I resonate with everybody because everybody is, you know, no BS. 
you are what you you're humble, you're grounded, and you're very transparent and you're real. And that is the tribe of people that I just love to work with and also, you know, have on on my podcasts, which I'm very active on. And um, Tiffany gave me the courage to just get my voice out there in the health and wellness community. And um, and and I thank her for that. So, yeah, I'm just sending love to everybody. And it's great to hear your story, Tiffany. And um, yeah, take care, everybody. Love you, too, Leslie. And you're doing great with your East West Coast functioning. I think you missed your ad on uh, your sponsoring the show the day before yesterday. Jason was promoting you. Oh, she was here. She was here. She came back. So uh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Leslie, for being such a good friend and for being here and supporting both of us. And and Darshil, thank you so much. Uh, we met Darshil uh, yesterday morning. <laughs> so thank you so much for being here. Do you have a question or would you like to contribute to this? Yeah, question? so uh, I was uh, hearing the voices and I, it was really amazing. And um, the way she was uh, sharing, the, sharing the story and it was really amazing. Uh, and I would just want to ask one thing to you, uh, to her. That uh, uh, which is uh, which is the biggest failure of her life, and how she handled it, and what is the message for the youngster who is suffering from the so many struggles? So that's all. What is the biggest what hurdle? What is the biggest failure of your life, and how did you handle it, and what is your uh, message to youngster, uh, those who are you know dealing with the struggling? Oh, failure. You meant failure. Definitely. Yeah. Biggest failure. You're on mute. Uh, biggest failure? I'm, I'm thinking, um, well, I mean, we've all made mistakes and I've used them as learning opportunities. So um, I don't know if I've ever felt like I've failed at anything. I've learned how to not do it again. Um, I don't know. Um, I need to look like Leslie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and eat more like her. I don't know. Um, I, 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 would, I would have to get back at that. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. I've messed up a billion times, but I don't think I have like one biggest failure. You know, like, I mean, yeah, I, so, I, uh, yeah, so can I make this little, little easy for you? So, what is your message to youngsters, who, who, those who are, you know, dealing with the struggles in their life? The mistakes are always learning opportunities and not to beat yourself up because we're not perfect at everything. A lot of us, when we have loss and other things, we think we have to be perfect or we have to do things well, or, or if we, mess up or something to give up or whatever and that's a mishap and that that makes me want to try again and make it better um so to learn from mistakes to not not let them have be setbacks or bumps in the road but just don't keep making the same mistake over and over again and expecting a different result that's the definition of insanity according to einstein so um to to be okay not being okay, first of all, once again, being your uh, title of your show. Um, but that to keep trying because if at first you don't succeed, try, try again, you know, kind of deal. Um, and we don't fail at anything. We learn. Every time we don't do something right, we learn from it, right? And, and instead of beating ourselves up to be a survivor and push forward and just or not to do it again, I think. And not give up on ourselves. The biggest investment and the most precious thing that we have in life is ourself, our life. Tomorrow's promise to no one. Make the best of each day. Make every opportunity. Uh, give it every opportunity that brought your way a try. You don't have to stick with it. Life is full of opportunities. You're never stuck on anything. If you hate your job, if you hate whatever, there's ways out of it. The only thing that we can get out of is death. And then they say taxes too, but I've heard of people cheating that. But, but then, you know, you never know what happens after death. Life goes on, yeah, you know, after death. There's afterlife or whatever you want to believe. But 
to appreciate every day that we wake up or we have a chance to, you know, help one other person or improve the life of somebody or or especially see what else we can do. There's nothing better feeling than when we have the ability to know that we we can surprise ourselves. Like, holy shit, I did I can do that? Like that kind of thing. That's fun. And my it's like little kids winning a for, for first video game or something like that but as adults when we adult like something that you want to do and make it happen it's a great feeling and to not give up trying because there's always a way to make dreams come true you just have to think outside the box sometimes i hope that answered your question uh, thank you so much it was really wonderful nice wonderful message from your side and uh i think uh uh, audience will learn something from it. Thank you so much. I agree. Audience always learns from Tiffany. So I appreciate that, uh, Dashil, for coming uh, to stage and asking that question. Uh, Melissa, Rita, Dr. Denise, Kirk, and Kiana, we will be uh, coming to you shortly. Thank you so much for your patience. We will be ending the room very soon. So, Melissa, do you have a question or would you like to contribute to this conversation? I just want to say great job. Kudos to you both. Love the room. Love the club. Love you both. Keep up the good work. Well, thank you, yeah, Melissa. Uh, Melissa, did you ever grow and figure yourself out too and bet on yourself and feel successful and love that you took a chance on yourself too? Yes. It could be a yes or no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, I knew you were going to say yes because I know you. <laughs> <laughs> Your comment was so vague. I'm like, oh my gosh, generic. Thanks, <laughs> Melissa. <laughs> you took a chance, started your own company, dark side of entrepreneurship, and you're thriving now. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Yeah, she is awesome. She, she, you know, we, we spoke to her yesterday, Tiffany. It was a great show. It's one of the most engaging shows. Uh, along, along, along with the other interviews which I have done. So thank you, Melissa. And Rita, thank you so much for uh, for, be, for joining this conversation. Uh, I know you're Hi, supporting Rita. Tiffany. Rita, are you there? Rita. She's sleeping. Uh, she might be awake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to okay. say hi to Denise. We, we will circle back Dr. To... Denise. Yeah, Dr. Denise. Hi, Dr. Denise. Thank you so much. For patiently waiting uh, do you have a question for tiffany or would you like to contribute to this conversation i think i'd like to just have like absolute infinite gratitude for the energy resonance that i share with tiffany i think that and the times that i've spoken with her but also just hearing her now and also i love the way you and queen had this like unseen energy and then you broadened it out to humanity and i I did. Ironically, I dropped a really quick show yesterday called It's Okay to Not Be Okay. And I just want to read this because I believe this is what Tiffany stands for and what all of you are standing for and what my purpose is. is it's together we are changing the way we think, talk, and act about mental health. Yet so many people are suffering in real time on planet Earth. We need to do better. We all matter. We are not alone. Let's elevate the discussions in all media, in our homes, our schools, and our offices, and allow sacred space for ourselves and others to experience all of our feelings, to reach our optimal health and alchemize our sufferings, to find inner peace and collective peace. I did a sacred pause show, and this is a sacred pause moment with all of you in remembrance of all of our loved ones that found it unimaginable to stay here and left the planet due to mental health challenges. I wanna just give a shout out to Tiffany for her warrior spirit and for all of you and thank everyone for the time you hold sacred space for one another. So thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Dr. Dr. Denise. Denise. And it's funny, we, we are in sync on a lot of stuff. Great minds think alike, right? But thank you so much for well, showing I, up. And I have a lot of it. dark side shares, but the, I just want to honor and elevate like the, the all the hard work it takes 
every day to do what you're doing and what just to show up for one another. And just I want to have infinite gratitude to you as well, Jason, and both of you and all of you here. Absolutely, Dr. Denise. Dr. Denise is a common friend of ours. Thank you so much for being here, sharing those kind words and, and, and that healing energy which you spoke about. So thank you so much. You know, I appreciate you being here. And and Kirk, and Kirk, Kiana, Rere, we will get to you shortly. So Kirk, thank you so much for patiently waiting. So great to see you, my friend. And Kirk is also from Team Tiffany. Uh, she's, he's also a part of the show. So thank you so much for being here. Do you have a question or would you like to contribute to this conversation? Um, I really just wanted to be here to support uh, one of my favorite statements that Tiffany made was, you know, how she sees the word can't. Um, so I know Tiffany knows uh, how much I love neuroplasticity. That's one of my big things is um, just even utilizing positive language can help us so much um, in terms of just retraining our brain, um, being able to refocus and reframe it. So I love the discussion. And of course, Tiffany, um, you know, you are adored. And what you and Dr. Denise, I mean, all of the people out there do um, to help people in this particular time in crisis. I know it's it takes a lot of energy. And I know you both probably go through compassion fatigue a lot. So it's of deep thanks um, to, you know, everyone out there who goes and seeks out some mental health help that there are people like you both. Um, and then, of course, Queen T, I love the poem. That was absolutely awesome. So everybody here and Melissa. No you're kidding, always, isn't it? You're, it's yeah, it is an amazing group. So All of us, um, I think if, if I know everyone pretty much, everyone's a helper of some sort in this audience that um, want to either empower people or help people or coach people or counsel people or uh, do a podcast or whatever it is there. Uh, this is, I don't know, this is, I think I'm pretty much friends with everyone in here and this is how I roll. <laughs> so we when people are like, you don't have, when you don't have family, you can choose your family and you guys are in here, you know, that kind well, of thing. And uh, you are adored, Jason. By the way, everything that you do is such high quality. Um, I've all, I'm always impressed, and I know how much time goes into those little details. So beautiful job. Love this room. Um, thanks for having me. You have no idea, Kirk. Like, you know how you have three emojis? Uh, Jason has... Uh, if I'm like, I, I, I spent five minutes on this post, and he's like, this is the best one you've done. Um, and then I spent two hours on it, and he's like, it's, it's, it's cluttered, I hate it. And it's like... <laughs> I can't wait. Or you know, or you know, Tiffany. He says that, that to he says that to all his guests, Tiffany. <laughs> it's not just guests, like helping me. <laughs> so now the question is, who's who's <laughs> right? Who's the best and who's not? <laughs> well, I told him like what we were talking about. You know, I I teach him some of the urban slang, you know, from America and that kind of stuff. One day, I'm just gonna teach him something funny. <laughs> Just wait for oh, I'm say. already learning. I'm already learning. I'm already learning. Well, I, mean, I asked her a question. I, I asked her a question don't, today. Let's just morning. not go there. Don't even go there. No, no, <laughs> that's just, it, it, it's just going to embarrass both of us. Stop. We can have a private talk with Girish from that. Because <laughs> I, I told him yesterday about that. Uh, it's pretty funny. Girish, I got to share. But let's just, uh, I told my client I might be like a 15 minutes late because I'm supposed to be there in two minutes. So let's get back to the show. That is so awesome, Tiffany. I appreciate that, Kirk. You know, you are a good friend and, and a huge supporter. I, I really like whenever you come on Tiffany's shows uh, and, and you are genuinely a good person I have met on Clubhouse. I know while... Uh, I interacted and spoke with Tiffany. So thank you so much for getting to know you and being here and appreciate all those kind words 
uh, to Tiffany as well as for myself. Kiana, thank you so much for patiently waiting. Uh, you know, she's going to be my guest this Saturday. I'm going to be making a cool poster, uh, or not poster, a flyer for her. So, Kiana, thank you so much for joining this conversation. So, would you like uh, to ask Tiffany a question or would you like to contribute to this conversation? Hi, Tiffany. Hi, Jason. And thank you to everyone here on the stage. It's such a beautiful conversation. It's okay to not be okay. You know, I think that I love that we talked, that you all talked about stigma. Because in the U.S., I feel like there's this pressure to not share what's going on, not be vulnerable, and to put on this persona of which we try to hide behind that we're fine, we're okay, we're tough, we're strong. As a black woman, I feel like a lot of the time um, we get this persona pressed upon us that we're strong and that we're tough. Because maybe we face different challenges on a socioeconomic level or even just <laughs> on a cultural level. And it's hard even to hide behind those interjected personas. And so I'm so glad that this room holds space for the fact that sometimes we're just not okay. And that in itself is okay. So Tiffany, my question for you is, what would you say to people who find themselves in these culturally oppressive stigmas, like in even Hispanic cultures and black cultures that really, really, really have these deep rooted, oh, you just let go, let God press on behind it like you're you're gonna be okay you don't tell people you're sad type mentalities thank you so much thanks Karen. I, and i appreciate that i don't know if you heard me in the beginning but i was raised by marines and veterans and um so and i don't even know what social or ethnicity i am i'm kind of a mutt because uh my mother was from madrid um and um uh, and like growing up without parents, whether whatever, I'm still a, I was still a young female, um, and having to push through regardless of race or whatever. But my socioeconomic status sucked because I was on my own, um, so I had to figure that out myself too. Um, and you know, women say that they are less empowered, um, cultural differences, all that stuff can be and i hear that a lot and but i think it's to each one how we handle our situation is what defines us regardless on anything because i had to figure that out at 18 as you know a young kid with no money like and having to you know with no family support nowhere to go on the holidays things like that so i don't know um i, I think what we do with our challenges, regardless of what those challenges are, is what is is amazing, and how we can empower ourselves. Um, and and despite those challenges, it makes it even more amazing that we persevere and push through it. Because if it was so easy for anyone, then it wouldn't be applauded. It'd be like a, like we'd be spoiled, and it wouldn't be like so a challenge. Like, if life was just really easy, we wouldn't appreciate our accomplishments and things like that because it was just easy. The things that I think I am most proud of looking back are the ones that were the hardest to get through. And I think that regardless on whatever person's challenge is, that be proud of your successes because you had to work harder than everyone else. And and those are the people we respect the most. So I respect you for even bringing that up and, and respect everyone that has not had it so easy and made something happen. Not just because they were like Paris Hilton born rich or you know what I mean? Like this, whatever it is, just had to work our ass off to get to where we are, regardless of whatever challenge we have in, in front of us.
I hope I answer your question, but that's my belief. You know, it's interesting you brought up Paris because even I think sometimes we like to think that money must mean that everybody's life is all dandy and and stuff. And and uh, I love Paris's vulnerability about even the challenges that she faced. And I think it's really eye opening for all of us that everybody, even these people that we put on a pedestal, these famous folks, these celebrities, they have hard things that they face, they have to overcome. And sometimes they're not okay either. And so oh, I agree. When you hate the paparazzi just following you around and trying oh, to tag God. you for absolutely everything wrong you do, you get out of a car and accidentally flash your hula and everything's all over the news, or you know what I mean? It's yeah. just like, uh, you know, I mean, I would hate to like not be able to just go to the grocery store and, you know, yeah, yeah, just whatever. They, so, yeah, I mean, it's just how we define them, but. But I mean, those are things that were, that's the hand that was dealt to her, you know, and she's got to handle it however she wants. But those are the cards that we were handed. We were all handed a different hand of cards. And, you know, if we, life is a game of poker, how are you going to play it, basically? Um, no one to hold them, no one to fold them, no one to walk away, no one to run. I don't know. That's, Take, take. I like the game. <laughs> I can't believe I even like quoted a Kenny Rogers thing. I don't even know. It just, yeah. At least someone but anyway, knew. Um, At least someone knew. I got you, girl. <laughs> when Jason first asked, you know, like what all started it, I want to be like, picture it, Spain, 1968, a man and a woman, like, and, and I was like, no one's gonna know the Golden <laughs> Girls. <laughs> Yeah, thank you for that. But I didn't even know the name of the song, to be honest. But 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 even like with the challenges you have, you know, race, socioeconomic status, culture, ethnicity, all these things that are going on in the world, racism. Like I, I was never introduced to racism. Like my parents always I mean, they didn't they just told me to stay away from Scientology. <laughs> Because in Clearwater, where I live, it's like the home base for Scientologists, and you see them all over the place, and they're like, they'll brainwash you. But uh, so that was the only one of us. Like, yeah, you know, when you grow up near the beach and stuff, everyone just kind of just chill. So I wasn't ever, ever um, exposed to that kind of stuff until later in life. Um, but I'm definitely not one of them. Like, I don't look at people by, like, I like, all cultures and all different foods and like Jason, one of my best friends and he doesn't he doesn't eat vegetables <laughs> and he's not laughing because it's true anyway <laughs> now, you're, now you're laughing because, because it's true but to each their own you know whatever you like a person for who they are and how they treat you not because of like where they come from or, or, I don't know that's I mean beauty's within not on the outside but anyway that's on with the show I gotta wrap up soon Jay <laughs> yeah yeah let's wrap up so Kiana I appreciate uh, you know uh, you know you're asking that question so I hope uh, you know she was able to answer your question Kiana or do you have anything like a follow-up before we move on to Ray Ray and Rita Kiana, I think you're on mute. I, I think I like Kiana's little, like, you know, fist, like, you know, doing a fist bump, or like, like, yeah, and that emoji. And I don't know how to do that on here, but. Apparently, it's for Black History Month. It was a complete accident. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm always I'm white, a... but whenever I'm like, yeah, I use it in a, I can't, nobody can use that emoji font in a white fist, or it doesn't make sense. It's just funny, just like a darker, like in, in the, you know, the fist bump doesn't make sense in the, you know, like you can color tone them. Yeah. I, I, and I don't know. It just doesn't make sense when it's yellow or like lighter skin. <laughs> it's not as tough. 
<laughs> right? It's it's giving it off just... straight Malcolm like Malcolm X vibes over here. <laughs> I don't know whatever it is. Like, it just doesn't make sense to give away fist bump or wait you yo like. What is that called with, with the just stuff like that? Like yeah, like I know what it, I I I. I, I use it. <laughs> it just means like rock on or like heck yeah, whatever. But it's like I feel like it's like a protest fist, like whenever you're protesting. That's what that. It's like an activist fist. That's what we'll call it. It's the fist of the activist. Maybe I don't know. It's I think it's kind of like another way of like you know the rocker sign with the two the thumb like the thumb in and the pointer like pinky up, but it's like a like a like a I got you like a yeah I agree or like heck yeah like or let's do this or mm -hmm. whatever kind of deal right uh, but yeah. thank you so much tiffany i really loved your uh response i think that we all have to break down stigmas no matter our culture and just really focus on overcoming and so thank you thank you for your share and thank you for bringing up that too um because it is it's it's worldwide it's global like one of my closest friends as well as she's uh, in Nigeria, Africa, and going through a lot as well. Um, friends from the UK, friends from Cambodia, can you know? I mean, everything's global, and uh, it's mental health, and we all have to stick together. And one of my favorite quotes I say all the time is, "Change can only come if we stand together as one." When we stand absolutely. together as one, absolutely, yes, I'm with you, Tiffany. Yes, I was agreeing. I'm just saying. You gotta put up a little fist like Kiana. I mean, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I was actually unaware. I was unaware that you can actually do yes, it. Yes, you can you can add a black heart or a or a black fist to your profile for black history uh, yeah, it's month February and we can right add now. In, it is black in solidarity. It's February and, right now. It's yeah, February is Black History Month. I forgot it was February. <laughs> it's just well, no, give me some I'm, credit. I'm gonna do that. It's February second, so I'm not too. Nozzle like, is nozzle has got her fist up. See T and T T and T T and T A. They got their hearts out here. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So Kiana, I it's want a to shame be when different. it's a shame when it's a month like mental health awareness month or day or suicide prevention Back. awareness day. It's like, it should be like all the time. Why can't we, or Thanksgiving, why can't we be grateful all the time for what we have or ending the stigma of mental health all the time or aware and be kind to others all the time? Like why do we have to be aware of it one day? And what the hell is flag day? We have so many more important for things real, to be aware of. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we have Flag Day on the calendar, but uh, we we get a month to be aware of like more important things or whatever a day like suicide awareness day, but we have Flag Day. I don't know, just saying. So so thank you so much, Kiana. I want to acknowledge Ray Ray and Chi who has joined the stage, and and Ray, and and before we go to Ray Ray and Chi, Rita, are you there? Uh, you know, I just want to be sure. Rita, can you hear us? She might be still away. I did send her. Rita message. actually back channeled me and she's on a business call, but she's trying to listen. So she okay. can't talk. She can't talk. Okay. She's no here, problem. but she can't talk. Okay. Okay. No problem. I appreciate you clarifying that. Really, do you have a question or mm -hmm. would you like to contribute to this conversation? And I appreciate, you know, you rolling in with the hot pink Lamborghini. Today. Yeah. Keep in mind, I, I, I told my client I was going to be late. We were supposed to keep this to 60 minutes. So, uh, but I didn't want to like be a half hour late, so we gotta. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be wrapping it up. Rain or I, I would leave you guys can keep talking, <laughs> but I gotta go. <laughs> and that defeats it. Yeah, Lady, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Um, thank you so much. I just was hey, just hey. here for support. Hey, Tiffany, I'm not gonna talk because I mean, Tiffany sounds like she has to go, so I'll just talk another time. It's okay. Thank you so much. Great, great subject. Thank you. Well, Thank you I would like to just for the support, right? That was funny. I, I wanted to great the other day, and she was like, "Thanks for stopping by." I'm like, "Stopping by, I've been here two hours." <laughs> we did great. Yeah, thank you so right. much for that, Tiffany. I appreciate it. Who's gonna? Yeah, of course, you did great. Yeah, Who's thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So go ahead, because I don't want to get you guys late. Yeah, I appreciate that, really. 
Chi, I'm so sorry. I, I think we didn't realize you unmuted. Go ahead, Chi, please. No worries. I just wanted to congratulate Tiffany and her success. I was here for the whole story. And, you know, I just wanted to come up and just say congratulations and just keep on doing what you're doing. And I know it's going to be awesome um, in the year to come. And, you know, things are just going to keep on going in the right positive way. I don't want to hold you, but I just wanted to let you know that that I see you and I am here and I'm rooting you on from the from the side lines i appreciate that you you're definitely never on a sideline you're in the front and uh and she's going to be on the show a moment of clarity with tiffany up top um uh oh she she's going to be on my show also on the on the seventh are we competing now <laughs> no but she'll be on mine on the 18th Okay, okay. There's no competing. <laughs> it's funny. He's like, if you ever listen, he's so sweet. He's like, I don't host this show on Thursday and Friday, so I can be there for Tiffany to support. And then I try to make every show as I can, but I'm like, wait a minute, you are there two days out of the week, and I get five <laughs> <laughs> to be there, even though I love listening. But I can't always be there, and it makes me feel bad when I can't. But, um, but. It's really great. Like that's a lot of dedication to do it five days a week. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I am. True, true, Tiffany. And so you're I, learning too, because I would tell them, we'd be like, uh, "Did you get the intake? Did you do this? Whatever." And I'm like, I'm "Waiting, waiting, waiting, waiting." And then you've been doing this a couple of months now, and you're like, "I get it now." <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's hard oh, to actually get. I've been doing it seven years. People. Yeah, true. So I, I wanted to quickly, uh, you know, we will move to the end of the session, Tiffany. I'm dedicating today's show on ending the stigma on mental health. I highly encourage people uh, to go ahead and, and, and subscribe to the YouTube channel, which I have pinned on the top, uh, Moments of Clarity with Tiffany. And it, it's been, it, it, you know, the show has been running for seven years and still strong. We covered 600 episodes on December 31st last year and and it's still going strong so please subscribe to the channel uh you know show some love to tiffany uh, by commenting on some of the videos after watching it please watch it because it has a wealth of information when it comes to the stigma on mental health so thank you tiffany for sparing this time today uh, for being on, on on this small talk show which we do uh, when we are trying to you know give out as much information as possible to entrepreneurs yeah thanks for everything thanks for having me jason and if anyone would like to um see if you'd be a good guest on the show um just um if you go to my profile and follow me on instagram i look at that more the only reason i'm really on clubhouse is to support jason sometimes or just to like mess around late night in our room so <laughs> but i don't really check the back channel here but i will receive your instagram um, if you follow me at Instagram on my profile or Twitter, Instagram more. I don't check Twitter all that much either. I do, but it's Instagram is easier. Um, just follow me and DM me, and uh, then we can see and set up a time for you to be a guest on Moments of Clarity with Tiffany. If you'd like to be to be able to help me in the stigma on mental health. So. Um, Mm-hmm. And that absolutely yeah. definitely needs subscribers. It's only been a year old because I started uh once COVID started. So it's definitely twelve thousand subscribers, which hopefully will hit a million trillion what that would mean. That the and mental health stigma is depleting. Not because of mm-hmm. trying to whatever. It's the it's the yeah. message I want out there, not the you know, whatever. But yeah yes tiffany i appreciate you being here i wanted to thank you for again once again being a part of the show i also like to thank all the people in the audience okay thank you rita kiana rere queen anjali down there uh, jean tiffany lj and habibat for joining the conversation i also want to thank all the people who will be listening to the show on replay or on spotify the the show should be uploaded in about an hour's time on spotify 
uh, if you want to be a guest on our show it doesn't matter how how much you know big your business is or what kind of a following you have as long as you can articulate your thoughts and share your story as an entrepreneur help us understand the dark side of entrepreneurship your challenges and how you overcame them and as long as you can promote your business on the show properly uh, feel free to dm me the word guest and i will be happy to help you out and if you want to advertise and be a sponsor uh, simple at you know just message me advertise you can do it on clubhouse or instagram and uh, i do my show daily except on thursdays and friday because i help tiffany uh, with her show radio right, show cuz we're on 12 yeah. to 1 tomorrow and friday yeah so yeah so i'm not going to be there us tomorrow on youtube and We'll be there tomorrow and Friday. Yes, yes. So I, I was just coming to that, Tiffany. So would you mind giving us a heads up on tomorrow's guest and day after tomorrow, so that our audience can tune in? Well, it's a surprise, but no. Um, I always have great guests, so we'll just keep it at that. <laughs> okay. Because I don't know when people are gonna listen to the replay, so like, we'll just keep it at that. It's always someone great. Yeah, no problem, no problem. So, so let's go ahead and actually close the room. Uh, you know, Queen Thank recommended you. this, and Queen, I'm following your footsteps. We will, we'll unmute ourselves and we'll do a countdown uh, from five to one, and we will close the room. So, guys, can you unmute ourselves and we can, we can start from you, Tiffany. Yeah, we're actually gonna do it this time, not stop and do it again, again, again. Yeah. Five. <laughs> Wait. Four.